What if I told you that America's most advanced fighter jet, a machine that cost taxpayers $67 billion, was almost considered a complete failure? The F-22 Raptor, sitting in hangars across the United States, represents one of the most controversial success stories in military history. But here's the thing that'll shock you. This incredible machine, designed to dominate the skies for decades, had its production line shut down after building just 195 aircraft. Why would the military kill off their most advanced weapon? The answer reveals a story of Cold War paranoia, technological brilliance, and political betrayal that changed the future of air warfare forever. Back in the early 1980s, American military planners were losing sleep over a terrifying new reality. The Soviets weren't just building more fighters, they were building better ones. Picture this, intelligence reports flooding into the Pentagon about the deadly triad that would change everything. First, the A-50 mainstay AWACS aircraft that could see everything coming. Second, the Mobile S-300 surface-to-air missiles that could knock anything out of the sky. And third, perhaps most terrifying of all, the emergence of advanced Soviet fighters like the MiG-29 Fulcrum and Su-27 Flanker. But wait, it gets worse. America's aging F-4s, F-105s, and F-111s were becoming sitting ducks. The writing was on the wall. Without a revolutionary new fighter, American air superiority would crumble within a decade. Enter the Advanced Tactical Fighter Program, the most intense fighter competition in aviation history. And here's where we need to be crystal clear about the timeline. In 1990, two prototype aircraft took to the skies, Lockheed's YF-22 and Northrop's YF-23 Black Widow II. These weren't production fighters, they were proof-of-concept demonstrators in a winner-take-all competition. The YF-23 was actually the better aircraft on paper. It was faster with a range of 2,789 miles compared to the YF-22's 2,300 miles. It achieved higher supercruise speeds, Mach 1.72, versus Mach 1.58. In almost every measurable performance metric, the YF-23 dominated. So why did the YF-22 win? This is where politics entered the battlefield. While Northrop was busy building the superior aircraft, Lockheed was busy putting on a show. They conducted flashy weapons demonstrations, extreme angle of attack photography, and live missile launches. Meanwhile, the YF-23 never even fired a weapon during testing. But the real killer? Northrop's reputation was in tatters due to massive cost overruns on the B-2 bomber program. The Air Force chose the safer bet, not the better aircraft. Seven years later, in 1997, the first production F-22 Raptor took flight, a significantly evolved aircraft from the original YF-22 prototype. Now here's where the F-22 becomes absolutely mind-blowing. This aircraft doesn't just hide from radar, it practically disappears. We're talking about a frontal radar cross-section of just 0.0001 square meters. To put that in perspective, that's the size of a marble. A 65-foot-long fighter jet shows up on enemy radar as a marble floating through the sky. But achieving this invisibility came at a devastating cost that nobody anticipated. The F-22's radar-absorbing materials are so sensitive that they require between 700 to 1,000 hours of maintenance for every 100 hours of flight time. Think about that ratio. For every hour this aircraft spins in the air, it needs up to 10 hours of specialized maintenance. The coatings crack from temperature changes, peel off from UV radiation, and literally dissolve in humid conditions. And here's the kicker that'll blow your mind. Even tiny cracks measuring just a few microns can increase the aircraft's radar signature by a factor of 10. That marble suddenly becomes a basketball on enemy screens because of damage invisible to the naked eye. But here's a mystery box for you. The maintenance situation has actually gotten much worse over time, and the numbers I'm about to reveal will shock you. Remember those early maintenance figures of 30 hours per flight hour? Well, hold on to your seats because the reality is far more brutal. By 2014, the F-22 fleet required over 40 hours of maintenance per flight hour, and these requirements have increased considerably as the fleet has aged. Let me put this in perspective. 
If you fly an F-22 for one hour on Monday, your maintenance crew won't see daylight until the following weekend. That's a full work week of maintenance for a single hour of flight time. No wonder these aircraft cost over $44,000 per hour to operate. That's more expensive than most people's annual salary for 60 minutes in the sky. But the stealth is just the beginning. The F-22's twin F-119 engines don't just provide power, they redefine what's possible in aerial combat. This aircraft can cruise at Mach 1.8 without using afterburners. Let me explain why that's absolutely revolutionary. Every other fighter jet in history has to choose between speed and fuel. Want to go supersonic? Fire up the afterburners and watch your fuel disappear in minutes while broadcasting your location to every infrared sensor within 100 miles. The F-22 breaks this fundamental limitation. It can maintain supersonic speeds for hours while remaining virtually invisible to thermal detection. This supercruise capability creates a tactical advantage that's hard to comprehend. When an F-22 launches an air-to-air -air missile at Mach 1.8, that missile inherits the aircraft's velocity. Suddenly, a missile with a 60-mile range becomes effective at 100-plus miles because of the launch platform's speed. Here's where engineering gets absolutely insane. How do you pack enough firepower to win air battles while maintaining perfect stealth? The solution was to essentially build the entire aircraft around its weapons bays. The F-22's internal bay structure is so integrated that the airframe is literally wrapped around it. The main weapons bay can carry six AM-120C AMRAAM missiles using specialized vertical ejection launchers. But launching missiles from internal bays at high speed creates a nightmare scenario. Weapons can slam into the aircraft during separation. The engineers had to develop acoustic suppression systems and precisely timed launch sequences that open bay doors, eject weapons, and close doors in mere seconds. But here's the trade-off that haunts every F-22 mission. Internal storage severely limits weapons capacity. While conventional fighters can carry 16-plus missiles on external pylons, the F-22 is restricted to eight missiles maximum while maintaining stealth. Need more firepower? Mount external weapons and sacrifice your invisibility. Now we reach the most controversial part of the F-22 story. Originally planned as a 750 aircraft program to replace the entire F-15 Eagle fleet, the actual production was capped at just 195 aircraft. Why? The answer reveals one of the biggest strategic blunders in modern military history. When the Cold War ended in 1991, the Soviet threat that justified the F-22 program simply vanished overnight. Suddenly, building 750 of the world's most expensive fighters seemed excessive for fighting insurgents in Afghanistan and Iraq. Defense Secretary Robert Gates delivered the final blow in 2009, arguing that the F-22 was unnecessary for counterinsurgency operations and too expensive to maintain. Here's the shocking math. Those 195 F-22s cost approximately $360 million each when you include development costs, in 2009 dollars, equivalent to roughly $500 million in today's money. The Air Force estimated in 2017 that restarting production would cost $50 billion for 194 additional aircraft, essentially building a second F-22 program from scratch. But the true flyaway cost per aircraft was actually around $138 million in 2009 dollars, about $191 million in 2023 dollars. The massive $360 million figure includes all that research and development spread across just 195 jets instead of the planned 750. But here's the twist that nobody saw coming and the latest development that changes everything. In March 2025, the Air Force chose the Boeing F-47 as the winning design for the next generation air dominance program, officially marking the beginning of the F-22's replacement. The F-47 represents everything the Air Force learned from the F-22's successes and failures. It will have significantly longer range, more advanced stealth, be more sustainable, supportable, and have higher availability than our fifth generation fighters. Translation. Boeing had to fix everything that went wrong with the F-22. But here's what's fascinating. 
the F-22's supposed failure is actually becoming its greatest success. Every lesson learned from this aircraft, the good, bad, and expensive, directly informed the F-47's requirements. The Air Force is actively using F-22 upgrades as technology demonstrations for sixth-generation fighters. Advanced sensors originally developed for NGAD have already completed six successful flight tests on F-22s. The F-22 is becoming the technological bridge between fifth and sixth generation fighters. Its super cruise engines, thrust vectoring, sensor fusion, and stealth principles are all evolving into F-47 technologies that will dominate the 2040S and beyond. And here's a mystery box that reveals the F-22's current crisis. Despite massive sustainment investments, mission-capable rates consistently fall short of Air Force objectives. The fleet struggles to maintain 50 to 60% mission-capable rates against an 80% target set by former Defense Secretary James Mattis. Think about that. America's most advanced fighter jet is unavailable for missions more than half the time. Aircraft spend months in maintenance facilities undergoing coating restoration while pilots wait for flyable jets. The annual fleet cost approaches $485 million, roughly $15 million per aircraft every year, just to keep them operational. So was the F-22 Raptor a $67 billion success or a catastrophic failure? The answer is both, and that's what makes this story so fascinating. As a production program, the F-22 was undeniably a disaster. Cost overruns, schedule delays, maintenance nightmares, and premature termination created one of the most expensive military acquisitions in history. Only 195 aircraft were built from an original requirement for 750. But as a technological breakthrough, the F-22 represents one of humanity's greatest engineering achievements. It pioneered stealth technology, super cruise propulsion, thrust vectoring, and sensor fusion that continue advancing through ongoing programs. Every F-22 flight test, every maintenance lesson, and every operational experience directly contributed to the F-47's development. The F-22 Raptor ultimately embodies the complexity of maintaining technological superiority in an era of strategic uncertainty and rapid change. While its production numbers may disappoint and costs may concern, its technological legacy continues securing American air power while pointing toward the F-47 systems that will extend that advantage for generations to come. Perhaps that's the real victory. Not the aircraft itself, but what it taught us about building the future of air warfare. The F-22 may have been too expensive, too complex, and too early for its time, but it was never too advanced. And in a world where technological superiority means the difference between victory and defeat, sometimes being too advanced is exactly what you need. The F-22's greatest achievement isn't what it accomplished, it's what it made possible. Without the Raptor's painful lessons, there would be no F-47. Without its technological foundations, America's air dominance would end with the fifth generation. The F-22 didn't just bridge the gap between fourth and fifth generation fighters, it's bridging us all the way to the sixth generation and beyond.